Hey everyone, welcome back to another Red Dead Online video. Now in today's video, we're going to be going over the three things that we go over on the channel each and every single day. And those three things include the daily collection sets and their current cycles. We're going to go over all of the daily challenges. And then of course, we're going to go over Madame Nazar's location. But if you guys are enjoying these videos and want to continue seeing these videos, make sure that you guys go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. Also, make sure that you guys go ahead and share these videos with everyone that you know and everywhere that you possibly can because there is a good chance that if it helped you guys or if you found it entertaining or enjoyable, that other people could find it useful as well. And the only way that we can make sure that this gets presented to more and more people is to smash that like button, leave some sort of comment, a number, a letter, a hey, a hi, something along those lines. And then that way YouTube will actually send to other players that need to be helped just like you guys. So if you guys can do those things for me, not only is it going to help me, but it's going to help other players as well. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the collection sets and their current cycles. We're going to start with the fossils, which are going to be a part of cycle number six. The loss of jewelry will be a part of cycle number three. The arrowheads at cycle number three. The family heirlooms at cycle number six. And then the coins at cycle number one. Now, the next four sets that I'm about to go over, you don't even need to be a collector at all in order to collect them. But you do need to be a collector in order to sell them. So definitely get that collector bag as soon as you possibly can. Obviously, take care and advantage of the triple times, the money, if you guys are into doing the PvP stuff. And as far as all the stupid bleepity bleep griefers that are out there, and you know exactly who I'm talking about, go into a showdown mode. Actually get rewarded or something that you're doing instead of being a <clears throat> dill hole or a dildo and uh, having something shoved up your own butt in order to try attacking people in the free roam event. I, I, don't, I don't understand what the fun is because it's not like you're getting awarded for it. You're wasting your time, your energy, your money, your ammunition, and honestly, you're, you're pissing off a lot of people. But I guess that's probably what you get a joy out of, so you might as well keep that stuff thing shoved up your butt and move on. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the wildflowers, which are going to be a part of cycle number three. You can actually collect three sets every single day. You got the tarot cards at cycle number two, the antique alcohol bottles at cycle number six, and then the bird eggs at cycle number five. All right, let's quickly go over the list of the daily challenges, and then we're going to follow that up with extensive detail. So let's go ahead and do that now. We got a thousand distance travel in a boat with a posse member. Five items sold to Gus, one moose skinned, three player kills with the shotgun in showdown, three posse races completed, three smallmouth bass caught, one visited a shop in Blackwater. The bounty hunter roll, we got one bounty completed without killing any enemy or bounty target, one bounty hunt completed with five minutes or more left, and then three bounty targets brought in. The trader roll, two goods sold to a local buyer, seven medium animal carcasses donated to Crips. And then we got 10 small animal carcasses donated to Crips. The collector roll, five bird eggs found, three coins found, and then three collectibles looted from non-player enemies. The moonshiner roll, crafted toxic moonshine. You have to do that twice. $200 on money made for moonshine sold. And then one moonshine bar changed to core. The naturalist roll, we have two blending tonics crafted or used. Three desert animal samples taken. And then free farmland animal samples taken. All right, let's go ahead and break these down so you guys can hopefully make a little bit of extra gold here in Red Dead Online. And honestly, like I said earlier, don't forget that it is triple times the reward if you guys want to be able to make a little bit and actually get and actually be in something where you can actually kill other players. I know you can kill people in free roam events, but come on, Rockstar, fix your crap. Let's get this fixed and uh, move on. Anyway, a uh, thousand distance travel by boat or uh, boat with a posse member. Uh, basically, you have to find a boat. Uh, my go-to location for type, these type or any type of boat is going to be off of Blackwater. You have to go to Blackwater anyway and visit a shop. You can actually just ride right past the butcher. So fast travel there. It's free this week. Ride to the butcher table, and then you're going to get that one completed. So that's easy. You can find small boats typically off of the shore here. If you can't find them there, my go-to location for canoes and boats is off of these islands. But then again, you have to do this with a posse member, so you're going to have to be in a you're going to have to be in a posse with a friend or at least somebody. And then along the Kamasa River as well. So you can typically find boats and canoes. So you're specifically only looking for a boat today. Uh, we have five items sold to Gus. Go to any one of Gus's locations. Sell five items. Doesn't matter what it is. Just sell them. Get that one completed. And then we got one moose skinned. Now I'm going to show you guys two of my go-to locations. If you guys have other ones, by all means, leave a comment down below. Uh, because ultimately we were just trying to help other people out as well. 
So from time to time, you can actually find one here at Lake Owangila. If it's not there, you can actually ride away and then come back. Just make sure that you ride a little bit further away. Um, and then the other place that you can find is actually all around the tall trees area, specifically in this area and over by Aurora Bison. Uh, typically when I find the moose in this one, it's usually like right in this general area. A little bit north uh, west of currently where the Manzanita Post is at. And there's a fast travel destination there as well. All right, moving on to the next one. We've got three player kills at the Shotgun and Showdown. Again, join the Tumbleweed series just because it is three times the money. Use any shotgun that you would like. Um, and then just start killing some players. We got three posse races completed. Um, you will have to be in a posse to complete this one. It doesn't matter if it's yours or theirs. And then you just start, basically, if you're going from anywhere to anywhere and you're not using a fast travel location, make sure that you put a waypoint on there and then start a race. And that's how you're going to get those completed. We have three smallmouth bass caught. Uh, my go-to location is actually on the Dakota River, specifically just a little bit south of where Valentine is at. So around this bend is where I like to go for smallmouth bass. And if you guys get the special river lure, it's the only thing that is attracted in that area is going to be the smallmouth bass to that specific lure. And then if you accidentally break it, you actually don't lose it. But if you get just the regular river lure and then you break it, you will lose it. And then you're going to have to either purchase that with gold or money. So I recommend that if you can afford and get and also be able to get that special one, it's definitely worthwhile. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I think the next one was actually the visit a shop in Blackwater. We were trying to talk about the butcher. Otherwise, go to anything else that you would like down there. We have the bounty hunter roll. We got one bounty completed without killing any enemy or bounty target. Basically, go in, hog tie your specific bounty target, and then get out. That would be the easiest one. And then we've got a bounty hunt complete with five minutes or more left. So basically, just do a bounty hunt as, as fast as you possibly can. And then we have three bounty targets brought in. Um, the brown, they can be brought in from anywhere. It doesn't matter which bounty board that you bring them in from. So just bring in three. The trader roll, we have two goods sold to a local buyer. Just make sure that you do this twice. It'll take about five to ten minutes a piece. Probably more about that five-minute mark, honestly. And then you're going to have to wait for two more goods to be able to be produced and then before you can actually sell them or goods to be able to be produced before you I mean, just one is all you really technically need and then we got seven medium animal carcasses that's going to be anything on the sides of the horses for today so you got like raccoon rabbits you can go after turkeys you can go after good ducks geese things like that and then 10 small animal carcasses so bats rats toads bullfrogs western chipmunks squirrels crows and any other small bird uh, so that's a lot of hunting today, a lot of carcasses. And then we have the collector roll for today. We got five bird eggs. Again, bird eggs will be a part of cycle number five. And then we have three coins found, which will be a part of cycle number one. And then we have three collectibles looted from non-player enemies. There's two different ways that you guys can do this. Number one, you can just loot everybody and specifically do like the bootlegger missions through Maggie or naturally because those tend to give you the best highest chance of finding an actual collectible. Otherwise, you can trick the game. A lot of people say it's a part of the game, but you actually never actually receive a collectible item. Yes, you get a tooth, and I understand that, but it is not considered a collectible item that you would sell to Madame Nazar. And this is a collector rule challenge, but you don't actually get anything. So if you're trying to actually get a collectible from looting, do the bootlegging missions. If you don't care about it, then what you're going to want to do is kill any alligator that you possibly can, a bigger one preferably, and then skin it, and then you're going to get a collectible, but you won't actually receive a collectible, but you will get a tooth. Hope that makes sense. All right, moving on to the next one. We got the moonshine roll. We got two crafted toxic moonshine. This does require you guys to basically purchase a pamphlet. Um, I don't recommend purchasing it anymore just because, uh, honestly, it's not worth it. The gold is just honestly just not worth it anymore. But if you guys want to do it, you can need the pamphlet first, and then you're going to craft it. We have $200 of money made from moonshine sold. Don't do it. Don't do it. $200 of money made from Moonshine sold. So basically just sell a batch that's uh, not like my video that I did earlier. Uh, but I do have one brewing right now. So when it's done, it should be worth about $230. And then I can go ahead and sell it. And as long as I don't break any bottles, then I'll make more than $200. But if I break one bottle, then I'll make less than that. So I'll have to do it multiple times. And then we have one Moonshine bar. Change the core. You can either change the painting or the entire theme. Either one will work. If you don't have the paintings, they'll cost money. If you don't have another theme, it will cost you gold. And then moving on to the last one, we got the naturalist roll. We got two blending tonics crafted or used. You guys can either purchase the pamphlet and then go ahead and craft them, or you can actually 
craft them and then use them. So it doesn't matter. Neither do, or if you've already crafted them, you can use them. Or if you don't have the pamphlet, then what you're going to want to do is just buy them and then go ahead and use them. And then we have three desert animal samples taken. Whatever is the easiest down in that area to get for you for the desert animals, that's what you want to focus on. And the same thing with the farmland animals, but I recommend going to Valentine or Emerald Station just because there is a variety um, of different farmland animals that you can get in both of those locations at the same time. But anyway, that is everything except for Madame Nazar's location. So let's quickly go over that right now. And Madame Nazar is actually going to be way out west today and down in the Plainview area. The only thing that you're actually going to be doing out in this area today is actually going after the desert animals, technically. So there is always that. But this is where you can find Madame Nazar if you guys need to buy or sell anything to her or just need to visit her because you're trying to, uh, you know, be smooth with her. You know what I mean. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. But until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it. And you guys, stay gaming.